Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Majin and Majist. And with me today we have Ashura Mutali from all the way from Uganda, the owner and founder of Muslim Girls International. Assalamu alaikum Ashura and welcome to Majin and Majist. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Barakallahu fikum, my beloved uh, sister. And I'm so privileged to be on this show. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. So Ashura, can you share with our viewers more about who Ashura is and uh, what brings you to Durban? Okay. Ashura Mutale is the founder and director of Muslim Girls International. I'm also an international inspirational and motivational speaker. And that is exactly what brings me to Durban. I've had a number of events. Alhamdulillah. This is what um, I'm doing. I'm traveling all over. Not only Durban, I've been to so many other countries, alhamdulillah. Okay. And so finally, I had to get to SA and specifically in Durban. Okay, so what is your favorite part of Durban? Oh my God, my favorite <laughs> part of Durban. Durban is so uh, nice. It's a very nice part. And I think I love the beaches. Okay. <laughs> yes, the beaches most. And... Um, of course, the shopping. This is for the women. Mm -hmm. I mean, we love shopping. Mm -hmm. So, everything here is so, so lovely. Okay, and how long have you been in Durban for, or should I say, in South Africa for? In South Africa, actually, I came for the first two weeks. I was in Durban, and mm -hmm. then the third week, I went to Swaziland. I also had some events there. And then I came back to South Africa for phase two. Okay. And yes, I'll be moving out in a week's time, inshallah. All right. So, Ashura, you mentioned that you're a motivational speaker. Tell us about the, I mean, what topics do you cover? What do you talk about? Okay. I'm looking at the Muslim in this dot-com era. When I talk about the Muslim, I'm talking about the Muslim girl and Muslim women in this dot-com era, whereby we are diluting, we are, should I say diluting our uh, Identity, this is the hijab. Lately, in the dot com era, we feel we're embarrassed of coming out with our true identity. Somehow, somewhere in the societies that we live in, we are made to believe like we are backward, we are outdated, we are primitive, we are disorganized, we're lousy people, you know, that kind of thing. So, I'm trying to motivate the girls and the women that we are gifted to be Muslims. I'm trying to make them feel the gift, the precious gift. This is a precious gift from Allah. And I would love any Muslim, wherever you are, to feel this uh, special in a very good way, to bring out yourself in a presentable way as a Muslim, because as a Muslim, there are do's and don'ts of a Muslim. Mm -hmm. There are things that we can do and we have to do as Muslims and there are things that we can't do as Muslims. So in this dot com era, I'm trying to erase out that feeling like we are backward, like we don't suit in societies. I believe like we can live so happily with our pride as Muslims in the societies without breaking the laws because you know, no matter what it is, no matter where you are. This is all about the world. It's one of the things that we shouldn't forget. So your purpose of having these events is to motivate more women to adorn the hijab, uh, to get them to... To get them, uh, to inspire them as well. Okay. To get them spiritually inspired, like to have the strength, the faith, absolute faith, absolute trust and hope in Allah, their creator. Because no matter what we do in this world, we have to know our purposes of creation and this is none other than worshipping Allah. And so if you are worshipping Allah, can you do things that Allah wants you to do regardless? I hear of the dot com era, you know, it's eaten us up like bin wavo. But mm -hmm. we have to know our purpose of life and this is worshipping Allah. Serving okay. Allah. So, um, Ashura, you know, it's always very exciting for us to hear stories of people taking Shahada. Can okay. you share with our viewers where it started up for you and how long are you wearing the hijab for? SubhanAllah. Allah. Well, thank you for that. 
a question. Actually, yes, I was born a Christian, and I never at one time thought I would embrace Islam because to me, Islam was by default a wrong day, and that is where I grew up from. That's how we were meant to believe. So, my dad reverted to Islam. When he reverted to Islam, I was just like, I never grew up with my dad. So I got to know him at the age of nine years. So when he reverted to Islam, I was just like, whatever. I didn't want to know anything got to do with him. Or else, if I ever saw him again, I would bring him back. So when I met my dad, that was um, at the age of 13. I was a little grown and I would understand everything. I was so outspoken. So I would bring him back. As young as I was, I loved God. I felt that closeness to God. I could fast. I could pray. Like, just as young as I was, I could look in the sky and say, God, I want to serve you. Okay. Yeah. Then when I met my dad, he was like, I was like, Dad, but I think you definitely know where you went is wrong. Please come back to Christianity. And he just laughed. You know, he's, he's my best friend. He just laughed. And then he was like, but give me proof. I didn't have proof actually, but all I know was that Jesus died for us on the cross, you know, those things. And so I tried to, to um, give him that. And he said, but I have proof that where I am is the right religion. I was like, but what proof is that? And he said, bring the Bible. I said, the Bible? My Bible? Yes, bring the Bible. So he gave me verses from the Old Testament. Actually, the Old Testament is Islam. You'll find that there are so many verses that were erased that really spot out so many things about Islam, like veiling, like not cutting the beards for the men, like uh, washing up body parts while going to pray, like removing the shoes. There's so many other, the pork stuff that we don't have to eat pork or else uh, God will be uh, angry with us. So many things, subhanAllah. And when I read these things, I was just like, ah. But how come I never saw this? I never heard any pastor reading these things. He said they are a lot small. And besides, there are so many uh, versions of Bibles. And some of the Bibles, the verses have been erased. So there were so many contradictions in the Bible. Some verses say different things. That, but different verses say different, or same verses in the Bible. But they, they say different things. Then some verses are not in this Bible and yet they are in the other Bible. So just saw a little bit of confusion. And I was so surprised about just everything. The circumcision, I'm telling you, the Old Testament is Islam. You know, the Old Testament is the untouched So, book. So you were 13 when you discovered this. Exactly. So when did you decide to take Shahada after your dad revealed all this through to you? You know, this wasn't about my dad, first of all. But this was, I was that young... Um, intelligent outspoken girl mm -hmm. so had it my dad shown me the, the the proof actually I wasn't ready but there and then I never took any chances I never took sure. any second thoughts I took Shahada I just know so because, at the age of 13 exactly oh. because I was praying to God I want to serve you so when I saw this I just definitely know this is the right path there and then I took my Shahada and embrace Islam, alhamdulillah. So as, I, as young as I was, you know, just began my teenager, it wasn't so easy to get me in this hijab. As naughty as young girls are, I was just, you know, exposed, alhamdulillah. And I never thought at one time I would dress up like this, though I wanted to pray five times a day every time I would move with my veil, wherever that it was, and I had the adhan, when time comes to pray, I would pray my five prayers. So you're very determined from a rather young age as well. Exactly. I never missed out my prayer. Alhamdulillah. So Ashura, that was a beautiful story about where you've started out mm -hmm. in that many years. But talk to us about Muslim uh, Girls International. What is this all about? Okay. And, and what prompted you to start out something like this? Okay, the Muslim Girls International, this is about, uh, this is a dawah and charity work. When it gets to dawah, this is what I'm doing. And not only me, I have other members 
where we have caravans. Sometimes we go to the islands mm -hmm. and uh, preach to the people, tell the people, get them. We're just trying to, we're not calling that non-Christians like we're trying to debate, but reminding the Muslims themselves. Because some people need a, a hit, a slap, hit on the head, like wake up. So we're trying to get them back, in, inspiring them, trying to, uh, you know, bring them, um, create the awareness of Allah, Allah being in control. Because so many people out there have lost hope. They've given up on themselves. Even the fact that they know that Allah is in control and Allah is all watching. So we're trying to just reinforce that. Yeah, reinforce that mm -hmm. and give them all the hope. Because truly, in Allah, He's the only one who can never disappoint us. So it's what what we're going to do is, Ashura, we'll take an ad break, and when we're back, you can tell us more about um, Muslim Girls International and how long this has been around. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Modern and Modest, and with me today we have Ashu all the way from Uganda. So we chatted about Muslim Girls International mm -hmm. and um, you've been touring countries and you've visited many countries. So I presume that it is present in other countries, mm -hmm. seeing that it is international. Yes, it is. How many countries have you covered thus far and what has your response been like? Okay, um, I've been to Kenya, I've been to Tanzania, uh, I've been to Nigeria, I've been to Sierra Leone, I've been to Zambia, I've been to Malawi. I've been to Swaziland, then okay. South Africa. And I have so many pending invitations, may Allah accept, so that he leads me all the way to those places because they're waiting for me as well. Well, um, my intention is to reviving the true identity of a Muslim in the dot-com era. When I talk about the true mm -hmm. identity, like you can stand out somewhere and they'll definitely tell you're a Muslim without asking or wondering, is she a Muslim or... Because so many people are trying to copycat our style. The, the style, I mean, the, the veil. Some people mm -hmm. are trying to abandon some people. But I mean, the true identity, the way a true Muslim should dress out and speak without words. Like, this speaks out without words. So how long has it been for you uh, taking on the hijab? How, how long have you been full into hijab? Tell us where okay. that began and how did it start out for you? Actually, just like I told you, I embraced Islam when I was a little teen. Mm -hmm. So I just stayed there. All in Madrid was the prayer. After all, I pray five times a, a day. That was it all. Then when I got, um, one time I was window shopping and I had the other and I told the gentleman that let me go pray first. It was like, Oh, you're, you're going to pray? I said, yes, I'm a Muslim. But how? You know, he was so surprised. I usually carried my big veil, so I would pray with it. And he was like, uh-uh, because I was this kind of girl who loved um, fashion so much. Like, I was so into it. I loved the bling-bling, the dangles, mm. everything. I loved to shine wherever I, I reached. I, I loved to be recognized. <laughs> you know, I was that kind of person. So I just felt like, you know, I should stay in this. And every time I tried on putting on the bint style, the bint style is this. I, I felt like my, my face was getting a big, my cheeks were swollen. So I said, ah, it's kind of like, I can't really, really wear this. But then little by little, when he gave that comment, it stayed on my in my mind i've kept thinking about it i felt so guilty i was like don't i look so someone had to doubt i'm a muslim so little by little i began feeling ashamed of showing my hair i began with the turban but then i stayed with the bling bling <laughs> the belt that you know the dangles mm. so but little by little every time i wore this i just saw myself i was trending but i know this wasn't the right thing that I had to do so I could pray to Allah there and then mm -hmm. yeah Allah please put me in the right picture of a Muslim you get it because I was feeling like I had to be a voice that thing it was a calling that calling 
you know, we all have special callings sure. in some special way. That's also another big story. But I was feeling it. You get it? Because at one time, I gave up on a big job on one of the big TV stations in my country simply because they wanted me to put off the veil. Okay. So I felt like I had a vision. I would be a voice to the voiceless out there. So I began praying to her, but I definitely can't be a voice to the, to the voiceless if I'm not dressed Just up. Just appropriately. Yes. Sure. So, but this was fighting with my own soul. You know, the hardest part is fighting your own soul mm. because this is what you want exactly. And then Allah wants you to be somewhat, something else. So I prayed to Allah every time. I loved lipstick so much and everything, you know, the makeup. Hey. Then I could pray to Allah that Allah, please put me in the right picture. Then little by little, I began getting uncomfortable in the belt. So every time I, I, I got um, so filled up after eating, I felt like the belt was squeezing me. You get it? So I just began getting uncomfortable with the belt. And to hell with the belt. I put off the belt. And then I began getting headaches, headaches with the big dangles. I love them so much. I realized, eh, you know, I put off that. So you felt you were getting a message uh, in, in that way to start turning towards Actually, the form Actually, I didn't really realize it initially. Mm -hmm. But as time went on, then the lipstick began itching me. I changed another brand. said, no, come on, this can't happen to me. I changed it. I had forgotten about the prayer. So when the lipstick began itching me, I almost went to the doctor because this was serious. Then, oh, I remembered. Allah does things in the most amazing way. Allah makes the impossibilities possible. He changes the unchangeable, subhanAllah. So I just definitely know he might have answered me in this way. So when it began itching, I just realized it switched back to the prayer that I prayed to Allah. And then the wanja is okay, alhamdulillah, it's even recommendable. But when I wear wanja, eventually my so eyes that would be your eyeliner. Itch. Yeah, the eyeliner. Okay. Which is okay in Islam. We're even recommended the women. We can put, even the men, I think so. They can. But with me, specifically me, it now makes my eyes itch. So I gave up on just everything. And I'm, I, I just got the confidence. Because being a Muslim, I feel uh, that pride. Like I'm so, I'm proudly a Muslim. So I'm praying to Allah to put nur on my face, even without makeup. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. That is the way that it is. And so I, I just, it's a mindset. So when did all this happen, uh, Ashura? Yeah, this happened like, um, like in 2016. It's just a few, it's just a few, a few years About ago. Years, okay. Yeah. Right. So that's why I don't condemn anyone. I don't pinpoint out anyone. This is one step at a time. I've been there. That's exactly why I feel I'm the right person to address these things. As a Muslim revert, I've been there. I know what it means like, you're not a Muslim and then you hear about Islam, and then someone tries to talk to you about Islam, mm -hmm. how you feel, and then that other bit that you're trying to take in what they're telling you. What it feels like you're a Muslim, but then this hijab thing, then what it means like you're trying to adopt the hijab. I know what it means. It's one step at a time, though there is a need to rush this because that's what I usually tell my sisters. You never know when death will hit you. True. Yes. Though I don't condemn people. It's not up to you. Mm. But it's up to you to pray for yourself. Just to get pray. some guidance. Exactly. Yes. Pray to Allah. He changes. So just coming back to, apart from being a motivational speaker and the founder of Muslim Girls International, you mm -hmm. also have a brand that you've come out with. Talk exactly. to us about the brand. What, what type of clothing do you make? And tell, yeah, just give us more about yeah, that. Yeah, my brand is Ashu Hijab Wise. Ashu for Ashura. Mm -hmm. Yes, Hijab Wise. This is um, my own style, like the way I believe hijab should be. This, um, the, 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 the loser, the cloth, the valuable, the hijab. Okay. The dollar, the color, the valuable, the hijab. Because I believe like, um, you know, the, the, the reasons as to why hijab was re is recommended. And one of the reasons is to 
reduce attractions to the opposite sex. Mm. So just wear anything, you know, how much they, they think we wear sacks, they're telling us we're wearing curtains, you know, curtains that are put in <laughs> windows and sacks because yeah. the sack has no shape. But for as long as one thing that we should know, we have to be smart, representable. Mm. Let's change the picture of how they, they look at us. Like we are disorganized, we are untidy, we're not smart, we just wear sacks. Let your sack be in position, mm. presentable, smart, clean. With the case of the makeup, I'm not saying we have to look uh, untidy, mm. crappy, and ashy skins. Find the right cream for you and then Yes, just bring out yourself in that representable way. So do you make them in colors? What are, what are your color choices? My color choice is actually, I can wear just any color if it's not, uh, we're discouraged to wear the, 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 the hot pink, mm -hmm. the, the yellow, you know, those very brightly, bright, bright colors. Yeah, very bright colors. Okay. But one thing once someone should know is that the dollar Dollar, the color, the, the value less striking. So yeah. you're looking at colors that are not very bright. Exactly. So I have like uh, six styles, different styles, of my my brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, different styles. So someone would just point at this, or I like it this way, or this way, and there you go. Okay. Yeah, alhamdulillah. So with your hijab, you make the the full garment, the head scarf, and the dress, and everything that goes exactly. together with it. And more so of the styles that I have, they have hoods. Okay. Yes, I'm trying to, yeah, some have this, just like the one I'm wearing mm. right now, but so many of the others have the hoods, like it comes from up to down. Okay. So Ashura, just before we wrap up our show today, what message would you like to share with our viewers? Well, the message that I would love to share is to encourage my beloved Muslims out there to be proud of being Muslims. Mm -hmm. Let the whole world know so we've got to let it show. Please be the Muslim ambassadors. Carry that flag so confidently up high because we still have the flag but if we will play around with it mm -hmm. it's gonna slip out of hand. And for anybody who would like to uh, get more of my great inspirations Please simply get yourself on my social media pages. This is Ashura Mutale Diamonds. That's on Facebook. Yes, I call myself Diamonds because I believe every Muslim is Diamonds. Mm. Then, <laughs> so Ashura Mutale Diamonds, that's my account. And then my page, Facebook page, is Ashura Mutale Fans page. Mm. Then um, for Instagram, check out with Ashura Mutale official page. Then with Twitter, there is Ashura at Ashura Lovely. Then YouTube, Golden Ash TV. You can either put in that or Ashura Mutale. I'm there. So just ask me about anything. Talk to me about anything. I'm a counselor. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for being on our show. It was definitely very inspirational. Um, beautiful words. And I like the way you've titled yourself as Diamond and Golden, which is quite nice. So. <laughs> Inshallah. All right. Thank you for watching Modern and Modest with myself, Nushina Ghani and Ashura. Until next week, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.